Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, the game has given us a whole bunch of moon contracts. We are not getting any contracts for any other planet. Uh, literally, there's, oh, there's, there's a little Airstream protective shell landed at EVE contract here, but otherwise, it's very moon. So we might as well go with the flow because I, I'm still cash conscious. Our building costs are going to be expensive. So, build a new orbital station around the moon seems like the most interesting new thing. But we could package it up with a whole bunch of other stuff. So let me just grab that. And here we have dock two vessels on or around the moon. If we combine that with plant a flag on the moon, we could have a little lander on the station. And then we'll send it down, plant a flag, and come back up and then dock. So we'll get that done like that. So, okay. Position satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. Uh, so there's two of those, and taking a look at the orbits, this is an inclination 10 degrees, this is an inclination 3.6 degrees, those are pretty close. Uh, so if we send the station first and then the lander separately, then we could probably put the station into one orbit and then the other, other orbit, have the things that it wants us to have. though. Maybe it'd be nicer to have the accelerometer on the lander rather than the rather than on the station. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, so there's sort of a KIS thing going on, Kerbal inventory system thing going on with the Kerbals these days. I wonder if a Kerbal can grab an accelerometer from one part and put it onto the other part. I haven't tried that in stock, obviously. In with modded installs with Kerbal inventory system, it'd be easy. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure, but uh, we'll think about that. And another thing we can think about is maybe we shouldn't send a Kerbal at all. Maybe we should send the lander with the with the station and instead rescue a Kerbal from the moon. Uh, I don't want to recover Kerberi and Kerberi's craft from orbit of Kerbin just yet. And I don't care about this Kerbal in orbit of Kerbin. But if we first get the station and lander into orbit around the moon, and then use the lander to rescue Tedbury, and then have Tedbury land on, oh, uh, yeah, land on the moon, and complete those the planned flag contract. That could work out. It depends on what orbit Tedbury is in. It's all very complicated. So we've got an ambitious attempt to fulfill six contracts here, and I've had a trouble keeping track of all the details of lesser contracts. So this is going to be interesting. So I'll have a hitchhiker storage container because that's a traditional space station part for us. And we're going to have the cupola like this and it'll mount onto the launcher like that. And then we will just uh, go ahead and have the docking facility for other things. We will need the docking port junior. That's our only docking port right now. We could have, uh, we'll put more docking ports on here. I don't want to block the windows, but it might be okay to have the docking ports here, radially. Just as extra docking ports for vessels. And then eventually, it's horrible to dock another station module to something like this, uh, with a small docking port instead of one of the bigger docking ports, but well, these are the docking ports we have. I guess we should check our science. Hold on. So, moon station. We've got 226. We could get something here. I think I'd rather have the cheetah than anything else. I don't know. Where, is the, where are the bigger docking ports? Oh, uh, it's right here. So, we could get the bigger docking ports. Actually, strictly speaking, as far as needs are concerned, we probably need the Airstream Protective Shell 2.5 meters, considering we've got a 2.5 meter station and we're gonna probably want a fairing around it. The, the conformable nose cones are nice too, so maybe we'll go with this. The big docking port is heavier and... Well, it's not actually that heavy. Well, it's certainly not as heavy as the ones in Realism Overhaul, so maybe it's not too bad. But that really occupi occupies this slot when I really want the lander to have a small docking port. Hmm. 
Uh, well, okay. We'll go with the small docking port. It's not nice, but... Now, we have a whole lot of Delta V concerns that I'll just calculate manually, I think. This is about 3 point... we'll call it 3.2 tons for margin. And... The Mark 1 lander can is just nice for this. We have to eventually bring our uh, rescued Kerbal back to Kerbin, but we won't fulfill that part with what we're sending up in this load. We'll just fulfill the stuff to do with the station and landing on the moon. I'll design the lander can separately, the lander separately, actually, and we'll subassembly it. I mean, as far as cargo stuff, we've got conformal storage unit. I just want to see if there's any indication of Kerbal's being able to take stuff off and EVA repair kit. Um, effect repairs on broken parts that may have suffered unplanned disassembly. Based inside inventories. So, this has Jeb's inventory, but there's also another inventory here. Let me just toss in the repair kit. Okay. And it looks like we can have more than one. But we'll just send one, and I'll wonder what it can do, basically. Uh, the question will be, can we move uh, experiment from one module to another with a repair kit? I don't know. 3,333 meters per second. I mean, I sort of would like uh, Lander to have 3,300. <laughs> I mean, that's nice. Unfortunately, I don't think these... Yeah, well, we can just surface mount ant engines. Uh, that would be more expensive anyway, I think. With infinite throttling, I guess using the, the little spark is not bad. The problem here is, the way I've attached this, we end up with six landing legs. We also need to account for the fact that we need to carry experiments down and such. I mean, in a way, I like it because it's stylish, even if it's inefficient to have six landing legs. We don't have the proper ladders yet, jeez. Ladders are really complicated, apparently. Well, it's gonna be a big step or big hop to get onto that, but alright. So, any requirement for the satellites to have some experiment, the experiment should really go on here. This just says antenna. Well, we really need an antenna that's separate. So, I mean, it's got a built-in one, but let's have an antenna that's separate anyway. We'll just have this one. And then we will put experiments on the other side to balance it. They'll take care of those. Five Kerbals are supported by the cupola and the hitchhiker module, so that's fine. This satellite contract doesn't even have anything except for power and an antenna. This one had the accelerometer. That's it. I mean, it didn't even... we don't even need the thermometer and barometer, really. These ladder rungs are a little bit weird. I'll take those off. Just because they're hanging off of the thing without being attached to anything else. That's strange. Moon lander one. First thing dedicated to being a moon lander. Okay, we should have some solar panels on the station, too. And we'll ostentatiously put four of them, even though I hardly think that that's going to be necessary. So, total mass right now is 6.4 tons, which is not bad. Oh, that's interesting. Um... Why is this not reading a seat? Why aren't we seeing a seat in the Mark 1 lander can? Oh, RCS would be good too, huh? It's got mob propellant there. For docking, we need uh, these guys. I think 15 will be enough. And... Yeah, but why no seat? Does this inventory take up like some seat space? 
I don't know. Did the is there a bug where the seat in the Mark One Lander can goes away if I subassembly it and bring it out? I'm worried that this there's a issue here. I don't like how the tag, the B612 Foundation tag, is off symmetry. That's annoying as all heck. I'm gonna take that flag off. Oh, this has a lot more inventory. You know what? Um, no, toggle flag. Uh, let's. Can I have your inventory up? Hold on. You go in there. Okay. Now do we have a Kerbal space? I mean, I don't know what, how we get a Kerbal space, but we might as well have the inventory. That's a lot of inventory, wow. You sure there isn't a Kerbal seat in here? Because I could have sworn that was the whole point of the Mark 1 lander can. Okay, that's our fairing. 7.6 tons. Now we have to get all the way to the moon and capture around lunar orbit. Uh, let me take this off for a sec. We would like for this to do the capture on its own. So I'm going to add some fuel and everything. Even though that sort of gets in the way of the docking thing, object. But as long as it's that lander, it's not a big problem. It'd be best to have the thrusters pointed this way. So, and... I'll use... oh, Sparkstone surface mount. Well, that's another bet bonus to the ant engine. But this is gonna be a heck of an ant engine burn. We should have fuel to replenish the mod propellant on the lander. Um, we would like more fuel uh, to replenish the lander itself. I mean, this isn't gonna be enough to fill it up. This is... so maybe we don't need the baguettes here after all. We'll just have a 2.5 meter this tank. Okay, but we still need mod propellant tanks. I haven't really done much with light so far. But sure, why not? Let's have two lights. So now that's a whopping 11.36 tons that we have to send to the moon. We have to rebuild the fairing a little bit. Okay, now we need to go back to Kerbin here. 0.79 thrust weight ratio with the Poodle. I think we'll go with a little bit less here. 2,000 meters, that's looking a little bit better. I'll take that stage. 0.91 thrust weight ratio looks nice. We now have the real attachment point. We could use an engine plate too. Uh, I wonder, this 0.04 tons, the engine plate is heavier, so I think we can just, yeah, and it's more expensive, so we'll just use two radial attachment points. Okay, that would not get off the ground, so we will need boosters. Can we, uh, kickbacks are reasonable on this form factor. Uh, we are over... we are over mass. We could probably fix that pretty easily. We can drop it down to one of these. 1.57 off of... no, 1.42 off of the surface. And 1.03 after the boosters separate. Um, why don't we take a little bit less on the surface and a little bit more at separation, so we'll change the thrust on the boosters. Honestly, let's see what happens if I just not use the poodle stage. Uh, well, the boosters are a little bit unpleasant, but let's say we put a longer tank there and just skip the poodle stage entirely. There's, I mean, there's an argument that we could pack enough that we could launch to uh, we could use this stage the bobcat stage to get to the moon or otherwise use the tiny little ant engines to get to the moon uh, if we had larger engines on here we could just use those 
to continue the trip to the moon. Let's replace those with sparks. We'll need nose cones. We don't have, uh... We don't have any controller on here. Independent controller. Whoops. That might be important, huh? We probably need a better antenna, too. Duel. Dueling hexes. Oh, now it's reading the lander can seat. That's good. That makes me feel a little bit better about life. Okay, well, it's possible we can get away with this. But it would be helpful if we had Werner engines to turn this. This is a huge stage. It's a dumb stage right now. But it's a huge stage. But uh, potentially the cupola has a reaction wheel. It has a pretty good reaction wheel, to be honest. So that and the lander can reaction wheel, which is also okay. And then all the hex reaction wheels combined should be able to turn that stage hopefully hopefully okay so we're uh we're close to the limits here still uh, we saved ourselves a stage in some cost it's still a pretty expensive uh, easily the most expensive launch we've had so far we need separatrons do we have separatrons we don't seem to have separation motors for the boosters. Ooh, there's a different... Oh god, that's a lot of logos. <laughs> uh, that's that's too many. Um, so... Yeah. Uh, it's amazing we haven't gotten separatrons yet. An antenna on the... On the main body here. Something that can communicate directly back home would be good. We might as well make it a relay. 5,000 kilometers. Well, we're going to the DSN. It's just 5,000 kilometers to any other vessel around the moon that it'll be helping to relay. So, um, we'll have two of these. It's combinable. Well, this is going to be interesting. It's got all the stuff for the orbital station around the moon. So, that's all good. It's got the accelerometer. We'll just have to see. Okay, launch. And I forgot to auto strut. Let me just go ahead and auto strut root part there. I'm actually turning a bit slowly compared to what I want to do. Can we decouple the boosters properly? That is going to be the question. Okay, I'm going to point a prograde first and then set. Okay, they're off. And they crash into each other. But that doesn't matter to us. So again, if you haven't watched any of my tutorial videos, normally in a stage I like to have 10 times the ISP roughly uh, in each stage. So when I looked at that Poodle stage and I went, well, it's only 2,000 meters per second. And that's not 10 times the Delta V, uh, 10 times the ISP of the Poodle. I went, well, maybe we can skip that stage. That seems like a skippable stage at that point. So fairing set. Now, that doesn't always work out. You can't always skip a stage like that, but in this case, I think it was a good idea. Let's see, comms. We may want to extend our antenna soon. Well, there's a satellite over there, so... Could be okay. I think we can extend these now without them breaking. Well, there's the moon right there, so we're probably going to have to wait in orbit before actually transferring now. Okay, coasting to apoapsis. It looks good for my estimation. This stage uh, really could transfer us to the moon. 
Okay, that's a good enough orbit for now. Kerbal, we need to rescue. That better not be in a weird orbit. First use of solar panels that actually track the sun. Okay, how will communications be at our transfer point? Well, we should be in communication with the Space Center directly, from the look of things. And there's the moon. Gives me a burn time indication, though, because we've got so much thrust, we don't need to start early. And go. And we're gonna go ahead with all the G-forces. Okay, so that's good. Once we get into Mooner SOI, we are going to want a correction like that. And heck, I'll add this stage tag along. Why not? <laughs> Why not? It sits here. It's not consuming any resources or anything. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, in realism overhaul, there'd be no point because the engine would be out of ignitions almost certainly. So it's nice. It's nice just being able to use all your delta V instead of having to dump the stage because you can't ignite the engine again. Oh, so there's the infinite throttle thing. Otherwise, it would have too much thrust to do such a correction like this. That looks good enough for the match. This might end up a recoverable stage in orbit around the moon. Communication lines at our capture point will be good. We should have communications. Someday we'll get a core that can turn to the maneuver node, but that day is not today. Okay, we're wiggling. And burn. Yeah, this captures into orbit. So that stage is going to hang out around the moon for a bit until we figure out what to do with it. If we can attach a docking port to it, that'd be nice. So we're gonna have to separate, and then this, it has its thrusters on this side, so we're gonna have to maneuver. Well, as expected, we have more than we need, but that just means more for the lander. So, oh, but the, land, the fuel priority is wrong. Oops, uh, disable crossfeed. We'll have to top those off again. Oh, we can't transfer fuel? What? Oh, because I disabled crossfeed. Um, yeah, we'll wait on that. Then, oh, I've gone too far. I've gone too far. Well, so much for having more fuel for the lander, I just wasted a bunch. We are not trying to land the station on the moon. <laughs> that was not the goal. Okay, it's satisfied with that orbit. We just need to stop wiggling for 10 seconds. Okay, that's good. Now let's get into the other orbit. <laughs> we'll probably end up trying to come back down too. So its periapsis is over there. So we might as well immediately burn to that periapsis. There. Okay. That's good. Our periapsis is pretty close to the ascending node. That'll be reasonably convenient. Maybe we should just keep the station in the high orbit. Uh, there's no good reason to do that, though. I think we'll just bring it back down. After all, wait a minute, it's Tedbury that we need to- Oh, Tedbury's down here. Okay, so we have to come- I was looking at totally the wrong place. Arnar, we already rescued. Tedbury is down here. Okay, let me uh, see that we're done. 
Uh, inclination is fine with Tebri. He's not going retrograde. Good, good, good. We need more satellites around the moon for communication, though. Uh, right here, we we got communication back. We lost communication on the far side of the moon. So somewhere in the middle of periapsis and the ascending node, we should be able to boost up. And maybe we should do the ascending node separately. Let's just do the boost up here first. We could have just released the lander. Well, no, uh, the lander has the accelerometer, so we can't release the lander. We need the accelerometer to fill, fulfill this contract for this satellite. Okay, obviously we don't fulfill the mission because we're at totally the wrong inclination. So we're going to fix that here. And ignition. Okay, that's all good. The lander is probably overbuilt with all its delta V, to be honest, but we'll see. We've got both position of satellite and a specific orbit around the moon done. We got the orbital station contract done. So that's half the contracts. Next time, because I'm going to end here, next time we will have the rescue of Tedbury. So we're going to bring the orbit of this down. Then we're going to plant a flag on the moon with Tedbury. Then we're going to bring Tebri back and dock two vessels on or around the moon. And then we're going to have to send a little uh, Mark 1 pod to dock over here to bring Tebri back. That's the plan. Things might not go entirely according to plan. We'll see. But that's the plan right now. So we have our first station as it is around the moon. And we have a potentially reusable lunar lander. It might not be the optimal thing, but I'll see. And yeah, so things are looking up. Anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.